Hello everyone and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today I'm going to share with you a class tech tip. We're going to measure for is carrier key or gas key gap. So I utilize this gauge in classes. This is my gas key gap gauge. Alright, I'm going to clear the weapon or make sure that it's cleared. Check the chamber, we're unloaded. Separate the upper receiver from the lower receiver. Take your bolt carrier out. We're going to move the low receiver to our vise. We have a magazine wall block over here, and we're going to take our gauge with us. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to take your hammer, make sure it's in the cock position, and make sure the weapon is on safe. If you leave it on fire, you might inadvertently hit the trigger. Hammer can drop and damage the bolt catch. We don't want that. So make sure the buffer assembly is installed completely, spring and buffer. Make sure everything's tight and timed properly. You're going to take your bolt carrier. It can be assembled with the bolt or you can have it stripped down, doesn't matter. And you're going to push it in as hard as you can. All right. And what we're looking for right here is the gap that's right here. We want to make sure that we have a gap that's big enough to allow this go side to go in. And if you look here, we cannot get it to go in. And the no-go side does go in. So our clearance here is too shallow or too narrow. We want it to be something like that. So before everyone loses their mind, no, you don't have to buy a fancy gauge from School of the American Rifle. This is just something that I use because it's simple in courses. You can simply grab two U.S. quarters. Stick them together evenly. Push the bolt carrier back as hard as you can, and you should be able to get the quarters to drop in that gap. And look, I can't without forcing them in there. Push hard, see? Now if I let it out a little bit, they will drop in there. This is what you want to see normally, but if I actually push it in with the proper amount of force, look, I cannot get them to go into that gap. Right there, see? My fingers are getting tired, so that's why you're getting this to randomly go in. See, they won't go in if I'm actually pushing on it. Try to keep them even too, that'll help. There we go. See, they won't go in. Got to keep a lot of force in there though. So that's what we're checking for. If that gap is what we see here, what can happen is, is when the buffer pad, the rubber pad compresses, depending on the ammunition you shoot, how gassy the gun is, it's possible, and I'm going to put this upside down to show it, this can hit here like so, on the rearward stroke when the gun fires and cycles. You don't want that. So having a sufficient gap there is really important. You can see on some lower receivers, if it's making contact, you actually see an impact mark right there at 12 o'clock. Now you can't see it on this one because he hasn't been firing it with this particular receiver extension on here. It was just put on, this is a Viltor. And it doesn't mean that this lower receiver or this receiver extension or buffer tube's a problem or the buffer's a problem. Sometimes you just get some tolerance stacking issues where just a combination of a particular lower, a particular buffer, and a particular receiver extension or buffer tube stack up and allow that to happen or it's very close enough for it to make contact on the rearward cycle when the gun fires. So what if you do have a close gap like we see here? In this video, what if you have this, where you can't get those in there? And I'll just use my gauge because it's a little easier for the video. All right, we can't get this in there. So what do you do? Take your buffer assembly out. Take a quarter. Drop it in there. Come on. There we go. Retest, and now look at the gap we have. Now, I don't have two quarters anymore because I used one of them. So, now we have plenty of clearance, pushing as hard as I can. That's the kind of clearance I like to see. Now you don't want to put a bunch of quarters in there and make it like this because then what will happen is, is your bolt catch up front here won't have enough distance to actually trip on the last round and hold the bolt open. So there's a balancing act that has to happen here. 
You want to make sure that you have at least the thickness of two quarters here, and if not, you can space it out. Now you can try different receiver extensions. You could try to turn the receiver extension in another turn, but you're limited out by your buffer retainer right there. You can't turn it in more unless you were to put the receiver extension in the lathe and turn material off so you can screw it in further. But essentially what we have here is the depth of this receiver extension. The depth that it's drilled at is allowing the bolt carrier to go a little further back when you account for the length of the buffer. So not a serious issue if you address it properly. So like I said, cheap way to do it is a quarter. Some people are bothered by that because you, you, you lose your drain hole. There's a drain hole in the back of most receiver extensions. Um, you could drill the quarter. I'm not saying that you should deface money. But that's an option. Some people will put washers in there. That can cause another problem because if you use a spacer that has too big of a hole in the middle, what happens is, is when the buffer pad smacks into it, it wants to deform into that large hole and it'll actually chew the buffer pad up. You don't want that. So I just use a quarter. It's nice and simple. Like I said, if you wanted to, I'm not advising you to. You could drill a hole in the quarter. I've seen some receiver extensions that take almost $2 and quarters to create the proper gap. So even if you have a quality low receiver and a quality receiver extension or buffer tube, check your gas key gap to make sure that you're not too close or you're not making contact. So I hope you found this video educational and thanks for watching.